All right, we are in the box and ready to go. Ten seconds to release. Cross your fingers and say a prayer. Okay, here we go, guys. It's real tough to see. Okay, tally hold the smoke. There he is, guys. He's in the climb. He's riding the fingers of flame. Look, you can see the, the flame. Sky. You can see the flame from here, Mike, or uh, Jim. Our webcast viewers are enjoying unprecedented camera coverage from the ground here. A radar-locked camera from Edwards Air Force Base tracking Spaceship One as it streaks through the sky to punch through the atmosphere and reach suborbital flight. Thirty-five seconds, 135,000 feet into the flight. Looking for an 87-second burn. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. He's in a roll, it appears, at this point. It does not appear to be a scripted maneuver. Shut down. Come on, Mike. We have shut down main engines to Spaceship One. Still in the climb. 250,000 feet still in the climb. Five knots indicated, so feathers coming. These are the tense moments, folks. Communications with the uh, air show center here. have been cut off and we are waiting to hear from them that Mike Melville is okay all systems are nominal wow look there's at your that. downlink camera look from at that folks. aboard spaceship one looking down at the earth 330 they made it Jim 330,000 feet they made it Three hundred thirty thousand. That would put them over the top. Yep. Three hundred twenty-eight thousand feet needed yep. to uh, achieve the required altitude of sixty-two miles, one hundred kilometers. Okay, the G's will... Yep. He's on the way down 320,000 feet. Stu Witt. Okay, Jim, what, what the pilot's going to be experiencing now is the G rise up to about 5, five G's, G's positive. Uh, and it'll start building. Speaks to the ex rapid rate of acceleration as he uh, lets gravity pull him back down to earth here. See, he's uh, he's coming down at a horrendous rate and he's accelerate rocket. up to about uh, 2 plus Mach, 2.2. And he says, he said last time, it wasn't as scary going up as it yeah, is coming he's down. He's going to get some pretty severe uh, rumble, uh, airframe rumble and buffet on the way down in the G-Rise. He's ballistic right now. Yep. Walk at the right. Oh, my goodness. Look at that beautiful shot. Go, Mike. Can you imagine the technology required to bring a spaceship back from that altitude, 330,000 miles, back to the landing spot from where it took off from just 90 minutes ago? That's uh, a goosebump day. 
Okay, C is going to get some oscillations here. Has seen that in the past. 140,000 feet at Mach 3. Mike Melville at the controls of Spaceship One. I'm just wondering if you had enough time to unopen those M&Ms this time around. Now he has the he has the tail of Spaceship One feathered here to reduce his rate of descent. Yeah, they got a visual track on him now. Here we go. Here it goes. And you can see the if vibrations. That locks, the we're back into an airplane. Stand by. And there's a great shot from the clay cam. So called clay cam from the clay observatory out of Pennsylvania. That plane that camera brought brought to us from uh, the clay observatory. And here's the great shot, downlink, okay. real-time okay. photographs from the airplane itself, from the space plane itself. Looking to reconfigure the aircraft to an airplane now for its glide descent back to Mojave. Looking for feather. Okay. And now the crowd erupting in cheers okay, as they folks. can now pick up sight of Spaceship One. Wings are down and locked. This plane, this space plane, this rocket plane is now a glider coming back home. Well, what I'm looking for now, Jim, is the wind. And right now it's calm at Mojave. And this place will erupt. We now have a glider back inbound for the money run. Tense times have passed. And now it is a time for jubilation as Mike Melville brings his stubby little spacecraft back to Mojave Spaceport. Um, between you and me watching that plane ascend, it looked as though there were some unscripted maneuvers involved in today's flight. I'm going to have to go back and watch it with the gang. Uh, I may be overstepping and speaking out of school, but uh, to me it looked as though there were some, uh, some wrinkles in that flight plan that weren't that weren't there and weren't scripted. You know, Jim, I've told the world this is flight tested. It's purest form, and uh, it's risky business. Yes, indeed. There's the boom. There's a sonic boom. Sonic boom, folks. Mike Melville coming back home. We can all breathe once he touches down. Extra's got a visual on the craft. Everything's green. Okay, I just got the call. Green for landing at 35,000 feet. And, and just a, a kudos this morning to uh, Bob Weiss and his crew with the XPRIZE Foundation, XPTV, for bringing you unprecedented coverage of this remarkable day in civilian aerospace history. Jim, we get to spend another night up on Sunday night. That's right. We want to thank KGET-TV in Bakersfield, along with KGOV-TV, for their collaborative efforts to help us bring this story to the folks in Kern County today, Kern County, California, here in the Southern Valley, the Southern San Joaquin Valley, where there is broad support for civilian aerospace research and aerospace endeavors in general. Uh, Jim, I want to let everybody know uh, this didn't start yesterday. Uh, Eighteen months ago, you came to the airport. We met, and you said, when this occurs, I want to be a part of it. And uh, you never want to turn down an enthusiastic volunteer. Thanks for your help, Jim, oh, and good. everybody behind you. You took a ride all the way, my friend. Happy to help out. Plus, I'm a cheap date, aren't I? You bet. <laughs> okay, uh, Just white, white Knights pictures. descending to 7K overhead the field, and it'll hold there until Spaceship One lands. And it will be some time before we get an official determination on whether or not this was a successful.